Hey, comic lovers, E-Money, the old man, and Thor the Dog of Thunder here with you again. Beautiful afternoon here, isn't it? A little, little warm, not too say, bad. It's, uh, yeah. it's kind of hot. <laughs> All right, so we have a bit of a special show for you today because we're going to do something we don't usually do. We're going to give you a movie review. We're going to give our review of the first MCU film in the last two years, Black Widow. All right, so and then we're gonna we're gonna have our mo our uh, comic book reviews. We have a lot of great comic books that came out last week. We have Crush and Lobo. We have uh, the Nice House on the Lake. Have a couple of indies. A lot of great stuff here. We're gonna be putting out. Hey, sit down, boy. We're we're almost done here. Okay. All right. He rides. <laughs> Then we are going to have our previews for this week's comic books. Probably a lot of great stuff coming out this week, so be sure to check out our recommendations coming up. All right, remember kids, we're more powerful than we realize. This is Back Issues. All right, comic lovers, so before we get started today, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, turn on your notifications, Give us a thumbs up, and if you like, leave us a comment. Let us know what you think about these comic books. All right, so today, like I said, we're doing something a little special. We don't usually do movie reviews on this show, but Bye. being that it's a comic book movie, I thought it was appropriate to do our review of Black Widow. And also, it's the first Marvel movie to come out in bazillion years. First Marvel movie in two years. So Ooh, That hurts my yeah, soul. Yeah, so we were excited to see it. All right, so... We're a little weird about uh, movie reviews in comparison to comic book reviews. <laughs> We're a little weird about all kinds of stuff. Why would you want to point that out? Yeah. So, whereas we have a five shield rating system on comic books, on movies we have a four popcorn rating system. And just so you know, if you get four popcorns, that's serious. That's, that's a perfect movie. We have never given two movies in the same year four popcorns. Mm -hmm. And just to let you know, there's only been two Marvel movies that have gotten four popcorns. The first Avengers movie and the last Avengers movie, Endgame. Right. All right. So, Black Widow. First Marvel movie in two years. Was excited about it. There were, I mean, first of all, I mean, it was still pretty great, but there were some issues with it. First of all, the thing that makes up any great comic book movie is its villains. And... Black Widow completely missed the mark with villains. Uh, I found myself, like, caring hardly anything at all for Dracoff. I mean, they make him out to be this monster who, you know, enslaves these women to become widows. But as far as personality-wise goes, I mean, he was just totally boring. Like, didn't really care about him. Did you put up a spoiler alert on the screen? Oh, I'm... Spoiler alert. I, I, I did put it up because... I'm going to put it up in editing later. So, so, so you, you did. did see it. You, you did, did see it. it. Yeah. All right. So, all right. So, Dracoff didn't care about him. And Marvel, you completely missed the mark with Taskmaster. I mean, I don't care if Taskmaster is male, female, an alien. I, I don't care. But he's not a drone he's not he's a mercenary but, and he has his own personality right? right and if he takes a job he's going to do it he's not going to just do it because somebody says you must do this yeah hell no he'd probably kill you for that yeah so i mean did we learn nothing from the mandarin in iron man 3 evidently not you don't mess with the source material marvel i mean it's just as simple as that such a good villain too. yeah one of my friends in comic book world is going to be crushed because mm -hmm. taskmaster Task, Taskmaster is one of his favorite villains of mm -hmm. all time. He's just going to, oh, he's going to be so yeah, sad. Yeah, was not good. All right, and then next up, I found myself, like, being teased with Red Guardian. I mean, they, they build him up in the trailers, and they hardly do anything with him. I think he's got, what, one fight scene? One he, 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 has, fight he has a really short fight scene with Taskmaster, and you hardly see any of it. Mm -hmm. You know, he, you know, he, you know, does his you know, ready to attack, to attack, and then just when the fight gets started, they cut to another scene. I mean, you hardly see any see of it. the fight. Yeah. So, didn't like that. I mean, David Harbour was seemed 
Well, I mean, he, he did have some cool, some uh, nice dialogue prior to that. Oh, yeah, he, he had a good part, and he played it extremely well. Good job, Mr. Harbour. All right, so David Harbour wasn't wasted, but I feel that the character of Red Guardian in itself was wasted because he didn't get a chance to do anything. All right, so there's the Guardian. And also, Black Widow, uh, Scarlett Johansson. I mean, I feel like she is so much more entertaining in other Marvel movies. In this one, she just comes off as kind of bland. Yeah, I mean, this is her family. You would think there'd be more... Chemistry. Take, but, but no, I mean, her relationship with... Steve Rogers. Clint. Oh, uh, uh, Bruce Banner. Yeah. I mean, much more interesting. When she has those guys to play off of, she's so much better. You know, I mean, she's been so much better in movies that didn't have her name on it. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And this one, yeah, I mean, she was probably the least, I mean, oh, Ra Rachel Weiss was a little wasted, too, in this in this uh, movie. You know, it was, it was... It's good that they got a really top-notch actress to play the part, mm -hmm. but she deserves better parts. Yes. Which, you know, the fact that she took that part, good for her. Yeah. I like seeing people take parts that aren't necessarily beneath them, mm -hmm. but you know that they can just really bring in that role and could has to be careful they don't steal the scenes. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. She did I mean, Natasha was probably the... Second least interesting of the family in this in this movie, and she's supposed to be the star, so just uh, just came off bland. Well, I'm not sure who you think was the least interesting, but to me, the most interesting was her little sister. Yep, and uh, her story is you know going to continue on. Looks that way. It looks like she's been invited to uh, Disney Plus for uh, future projects. Yeah. So watch the scene after the credits. Yep. So uh, we'll see uh, if she shows up in Hawkeye, which is looking like it's going to be that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and also you got Julia Louis Dreyfus, this character who we saw in uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, which this was supposed to be the first time we see her, but because Timing. Black Widow got delayed, they put out Falcon and the Winter Soldier before it, and you know that's when we first see her in Falcon well, and the Winter it, Soldier. It didn't hurt anything. Yeah, I mean it was fine. All right, so uh, Black Widow ended up coming in at two and a half popcorns out of four. So, not horrible, and, you know, a Marvel movie is still a Marvel movie. I mean, there is not a bad MCU movie out there, in my opinion. When it it's, comes out on Blu-ray, you know we're going to buy it. Yeah, it's just, you know, obviously some are better than others. So... I think Black Widow would end up, if, if we were to rank them, I think Black Widow would end up somewhere in the middle to lower rankings for uh, MCU movies. So, it was a lukewarm return to theaters for the MCU, in my opinion. So, hopefully, uh, later this year, we see some improvement on that front. Now, now don't go telling everybody that Emily Old Man said the movie stank. It did not. Mm. Two and a half popcorns is a good rating. Mm -hmm. I mean... Two popcorns means I don't regret seeing it. Mm. Two and a half means, hey, that was pretty good. Yeah. When you get into the three and the three and a half and the four, whoa. Yeah. That's the, most Marvel movies come in at the three, three and a half. There yeah. have been a couple of twos, though. So. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, there's Black Widow. Now, on to our comic book reviews for last week. I think that's what they're here for anyway. Yeah. So let's get into it with our first, our uh, ones we want to mention that didn't get into the top three. And these are just books that we were looking forward to that we just feel like we, we need to talk a little bit about. First up from Image is Ordinary Gods number one. We picked this up because there was a lot of hype about this book. A lot of people talking about it. They were running ads in the comics about it. But I, I don't get it because... Uh, the issue was, you know, there was a lot of exposition giving you the backstory. Apparently, gods are, you know, reincarnated uh, as when, whenever they die. Which, you know, why, you know, why would gods need to be reincarnated? But that seems to be uh, how it goes in this story. And uh, we see the latest incarnation of one of the gods in this young man. And uh, it, eh, it was okay. I mean, nothing I would write home about. Well, we gave it three and a half shields, so it, it barely 
this, okay. this so, the top three. All right, so not bad and, uh, you know, good artwork, right? Yeah. So, all right, so brings us to our next one, our one of our favorite post-apocalyptic stories, Noctera. This is number five in the series. Noctera number five. Good so, stuff. Yeah. What maybe kept this one out of the top three this week was there was a lot of explanation, a lot of uh, sciencey stuff, and not a whole lot of action here. So, um, little, little more, uh, little less exciting than other well, issues. Last issue, it's going to be hard to beat that. I mean, that was a Mad Max type of stuff. Yeah. And uh, there was a lot, uh, there, there was a big twist at the end, which I uh, did not see coming. So that uh, uh, made it a little bit better. So Noctera came in at three and a half shields out of five. All right. So another one we probably have to mention, uh, Space Bastards number, number seven. seven. And we have to mention it because we, we always mention it. Yep. It used to be because we loved the book. Yep. Now we mention it because we're kind of disappointed in the book. All right, so you guys may recall uh, we kind of ripped the last issue to shreds because uh, the artwork stunk. The uh, the uh, new artist Bisley uh, do it did it and uh, was not happy about it. The last issue his uh, his work was painted. That's what I understand. The way it looked anyway. So this new issue he did, he did with pencils, I am told. And I'll say, I mean, it's a little bit better, but still not up to the quality it was in the first five issues with uh, Robertson, was his name? I think so. Derek right. Robertson. Great artist. He, you know, he, he did the first five issues, which is part of what made the first five issues so amazing. The you know great story and the great artwork. Uh, Bisley, not up to snuff. Now, we're told from an ad in the back here that the next issue, we're getting Robertson back. Yay! So that's a big deal to us. Mm -hmm. my, my thing to, to the two writers, Peterson and Aubrey, I know that, that Joe Aubrey watches our channel and comments on it occasionally. We, we appreciate that. Um, let's talk about the writing a little bit. The first five issues of this book were light, funny. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was a decent amount of violence in it, but it was just entertaining. Mm -hmm. These last two issues have been, let's show how many ways Manicore can make people's blood end up outside of their body instead of mm -hmm. inside. I mean, that may be, <sighs> that may be uh, more, you know, Bisley's choice than Aubrey's. I would so, hope. Yeah. But guys, writing a book, the first five issues, great stuff let's go back yeah let's do great stuff again and not just have a, a slaughter fest and also i should mention that there was it was a giant size issue here the the second part was done by a different artist and you know his also a bit better than bisley's and i think it was painted right so still a little better but still not up to uh, robertson's quality in my opinion all right so um, Space Bastards number seven comes in at uh, three shields after it was rounded up. All right, comes in at three shields. Looking forward to seeing Robertson back next month. All right, and then for our last honorable mention, we want to talk about something that's been hyped about a lot uh, the last month. And I think it's deservedly hyped. Yep, yeah. uh, the Nice House on the Lake number two. So in this issue, the um, uh, survivors are kind of coming to terms with their situation here and uh, what they're going to do long term which they don't really know and uh, we see we're, we're theorizing what the next step is now the thing about this story is i could easily see the ending of the first issue being the ending to an episode of the twilight zone which is good yeah and and the story ends right there i mean that's the end of the episode you know you don't really and if it were Twilight Zone, you don't really continue the story. It's a one-shot deal. I don't think there were ever any two-part Twilight Zone right. episodes. So, in this story, it, the story continues on. So, where are they going with it? I mean, I feel like this was a transitional issue to what's going to happen next. And I have no idea. 
So I'm eager to see what plans they have for the story. Now, we brag about this book, yet it didn't make the top three. Because, not because of story. For example, I gave the story five shields. You gave it four. Mm -hmm. So normally you would say, well, that gets them there. That gets them in the top three. But the artwork is mediocre at best. I mean, I think I was generous in giving the artwork three shields. You gave it two, which mm. is probably more accurate. It's not a book you read because of the art. You no. read it because of fantastic story. Mm -hmm. So, there you have it. All right, so that came in with an average, with the uh, overall score of... Three and a half. Three and a half. All right, so there is our honorable mentions for this week. Now on to our top three. All right, All right, so this time there was a tie for first place and second place. Third place was third place. And to pick how we came up with first and second, we had a rousing game of Duck, Duck, Goose. How do you play Duck, Duck, Goose with two people? I don't know. We did it. You won, so what are you worried about? All right, so at number three, Coming in at 3.75, so we round up to four shields, is Batman number 110. All right, so this story is sort of a uh, prequel story to what we see in Future State. Now, you heard us talk about it a few months ago. Uh, we were overall not big fans of Future State, but the stuff that we did like, most of it was Batman stuff. So... Didn't hate it all. Didn't hate the Batman stuff that much, and this one leads up to it. Uh, first of all, great artwork in this issue. Uh, Batman takes on the lead magistrate in uh, the New Order of Gotham, and he is helped out by some relatively new members of the Bat family, including Harley Quinn. And I, I love her character development in this story. I. You know, we're not reading the Harley Quinn comic book, comic book anymore because I couldn't stand the artwork anymore. But I didn't hate the story, which just kind of makes me sad. Uh, you know, Harley trying to go on straight and narrow is a, is a strong word, but, you know, on, like, this side of the line. Hang on. I mean, Harley Quinn, Loki, trying to make them good guys, and... I watched every episode of Loki. Watch our reaction video. We'll, mm. do, we'll do one more for this last episode. But Loki is the villain. He is the villain. Now, he can act like he's all goody two-shoes. Something's going to happen where he's got to make a choice. Is he going to be a good guy? Or is he going to take the easier path to be a bad guy? And I promise you, he's not going to be the good guy. Harley Quinn... Is a loon. She's nuts, and she's always gonna be nuts. She's she never always, gonna. She'll be always be a little nuts, but I'm hoping she's not always the villain. And uh, hopefully, you know, Batman and the other members of the family can, you know, help keep an eye on her. Yeah. So there you have uh, Batman number one ten comes in at four shields. All right. Also coming in at four shields. Mm -hmm. Our favorite post of, well, maybe not even our favorite, one of our favorite post-apocalyptic stories, Geiger number four, the man who glows in the dark. Yep. All right, so in this issue, uh, Geiger is sort of on the run from the King's Men, and he's helping out a uh, couple kids who kind of fell into his lap. I mean, literally just, oh, there you are. And this issue is pretty much a chase scene. Uh, reminiscent of Mad Max. Good stuff. Yep. I want to see it on the big screen. Mm -hmm. And so exciting stuff here and a uh, cool ending. It comes in at four shields out of five. Mm -hmm. And now for our number one issue for this month or this week. We have DC's. It's a limited series, unfortunately. This is number two of eight. Crush and Lobo. All right. So... I'll be honest, I didn't know, know a whole lot about Crush before uh, this series started. Uh, we see a little bit of character development, a little bit of uh, backstory I in this issue. See, I think you see a lot of backstory. Mm -hmm. you know, she even says, uh, uh, what is it, uh, apparently unavoidable relationship flashback is what she says in the issue. 
and uh, we see where she meets her ex-girlfriend and a few other things here and something that is so great about Crush is you know she's not her father and uh, you know there's a lot of a lot of good stuff to her and uh, we see that and but she is just as durable as Lobo because apparently she doesn't need to breathe in space well I mean Lobo used to ride his space dolphins through space and he didn't need air so yeah. mm -hmm. so uh, also in this issue, we catch up on Lobo a little bit, who is in prison, and uh, Lobo is not causing trouble at the moment, so you got to have to wonder, you know, what the hell is he up to? Tick, tock, tick, tock. Yeah. It's just a matter of when. Mm-hmm. So, uh, good story development and great artwork as well, which is why it comes in at four shields out of five. That's right. All right, so there is our... Top three for last week's issues. Be sure to check them out at your local comic book shop. All right, so what do we have going on this week? All right, looks like another good week. Um, stuff that maybe we're not super looking forward to, but it's interesting. I've been enjoying another post-apocalyptic story, Eve. Number three comes out. Okay. Um, Spider-Man, Spider-Shadow, I think that's a limited series, mm -hmm. but number four comes out, and it's been really good, um, and always Thor, Thor number 15 comes out, Thor's been good ever since, uh, Thor God of Thunder number one. Which was back in 2013? Yeah, well, maybe not that long ago, but it's, it's been a while. Yeah. All right, so, the stuff that we're really looking forward to, oh, we're such Batman fans, I yeah. swear, it's terrible. Batman the Detective number four comes out. Mm -hmm. That has been really good. Detective Comics number 1039 comes out. You don't go a thousand issues without doing <laughs> something good. Right. So that's looking good. Um, Commissioner Gordon number five comes out. Joker number five. If, if you must. Um, and I'm really looking forward to a new Spider-Man book. Probably a limited series. It's called Sinister War number one. With the... Uh, I assume it's the Sinister Six. Sinister Six, right? not Mr. Sinister. Okay. Oh, it wouldn't have anything to do with Mr. Sinister. Mm. All right, so there are your issues, our uh, uh, ones we recommend or are at least curious about for this week. You know, it could be they suck and, uh, you know, the, the new stuff that uh, comes out. So be sure to check them out at your local comic book shop. And also, you know, leave something in the comments. If there is something out there that you're reading that we're not, let us know about it. You know, give us some recommendations. You know, we're always, th there's always um, a bit of a uh, pass-fail with us on new issues. Oh, a lot yeah. of stuff that we, uh, you know, we read one and say, uh, let's not get that anymore. And there's constantly books that we end up having to go chase back issues because we didn't mm -hmm. jump on board. Yep. I mean, what was the dog book? Um, stray Straw Dogs or Stray, stray Dogs? Stray Dogs. Yeah. Great story. Mm -hmm. Who'd have thunk it? It looked very cartoonish and mm -hmm. silly, but it's a great story. We had to go back and get all the issues. All right. And it wasn't cheap. <laughs> all right, so be sure to check out these and give us some recommendations. All right, so we uh, head back up to the garage with Thor and a special stump the old man question this week. Yeah, just great. <laughs> All right, comic lovers, back here with a brand new stump the old man question. And I have one in honor of Black Widow out, came out last week now. So here it is, just one question. All right, the question is, on what planet does Black Widow die in order for Clint to obtain the Soul Stone in Avengers Endgame? Well, I don't know, so I'm just going to throw the only planet I remember them talking about, which was Titan. That is incorrect. <laughs> Titan is Thanos' home planet where they have the battle with him at the end of Infinity War, but that is not where Natasha dies. Natasha dies on Vormir. She has to kill herself falling off the cliff in order for Clint to obtain the Infinity Stone. Of course, you know, they have the back and forth about uh, who's going to sacrifice themselves, but ultimately Natasha wins that one. All right, so we there it is. a bigger chair. <laughs> yep. Uh, so there it is. Stump the old man is stumped this week. 
All right, so that's gonna do it for another episode of Back Issues. So what do we have going on for the Marvel schedule for the rest of this year? We have Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings coming up. So what we, we saw the trailer for it at, uh, before Black Widow this week. And you know what I did is I made the old man avert his eyes because what I do sometimes is I take the brunt of the spoilers He's for trailers. Son. So yeah, because I want the old man to actually be surprised by some things when we go to see the actual movie. And this newest trailer for Shang-Chi, there are at least two or three major spoilers in the trailer that I don't want him to see. Because, I want to see it. Yeah, because, you know, who, who needs to see this stuff? We need to be in charge of trailers, the old man and I, because we're not going to give stuff away. I always say... An existing property, like a Marvel movie or a Star Wars movie, I mean, how much stuff do you actually need in the trailer? I just need to know what the movie is and the date is coming out. I mean, I'll be there. They got an the existing money property, yeah, you, you got the money. You don't need to show us a whole lot. Give us, like, maybe a minute long trailer and be as vague as possible. Don't show us a lot of stuff because, you know, we can enjoy the movie more that way. So we got Shang-Chi, we got the Eternals, and then we have Spider-Man No Way Home coming out later this year, which I'm really looking forward to. I'm, I'm not a big fan of the uh, alternate universes. And oh, mul multiverse yeah. stuff. I mean, that's what makes it so exciting. It. I mean, Crisis on Infinite Earths. I mean, you tell me that wasn't exciting? For sure. And then they messed it up. They brought all the Earths back, or some of them. Well, yeah, they did, and it, it's confusing as hell. I mean, I need to sit down with Greg Berlanti and have him explain all this to me, because a lot of stuff doesn't sound right. All right, so that does it for this episode. Be sure to tune in next week for more reviews and previews. We'll see you guys next time. Excelsior. True believers, in the comments, tell us your favorite comic that you've read in the last month. I dare you.